Hi, welcome to the final part of the Conservative University's course on Sex, Lies, and Women's Studies. I know you have loved it because I know that there have been some incredible women teaching this course, some incredible conservative movement leaders. You have really benefited from the best. Now you notice that I say conservative leaders and they are conservative leaders. They happen to be women, but they're some of the best leaders that the conservative movement has. Now, why in the world did these women, did I, decide to get involved and get invested in the conservative movement? Well, is it because we just you know, didn't have anything better to do on a Saturday afternoon than go speak at a couple rallies and hold up signs? No, it's because we're passionate about what we believe. We're passionate about women's studies programs and how they bring down the quality and caliber of the overall educational experience. We're passionate about economic policy. We're passionate about economic growth and expanded liberty. But there's another reason why we get involved, and that is because there is an outright assault going on right now, and it's coming from the left, and it's attacking conservatives suggesting that we conservatives don't care about women or that we actually want to put women down, that we're actually vicious towards the rights and opportunities that women should experience. And so we believe that it's important for women to step forward and be active, let our voices be heard by the country because we believe that by conservative women stepping up, other women look at us and say, well, wait a minute, maybe the left is kind of full of it, and maybe that conservatism does have something for me and does have something for other women. So we think it's imperative for you young women out there to become leaders in the conservative movement, at your college campus, in the community, to become outspoken champions for liberty and for freedom. Now it's my job to sort of wrap this up and give you some suggestions for how you can become activists, for how you can become more engaged and more involved in the conservative movement. So I really have three things that I wanna tell you about today. And the first is really important and it's something that's personal. It is decide what you are passionate about. What is your passion? Because what, what is it that illuminates you and animates you and you just get fired up about? It might be education, choice in education. You might be disgusted that we're sending our kids off to these dropout factories that we call inner city public schools and you think everybody is entitled to the best quality education. It might be the free market. It might be um, quality health care that does not involve the government taking over vast portions of a private economy. It might be genuine human rights for women around the world. I don't know what it is for you, but for me, and some people might think this is a little corny, but I'll tell you what, for me, my passion is expanding liberty, expanding freedoms for the individual. I want to pass freedom on to my children, not just intact as it was when I came along, but expanded. I want them to have more opportunities than I've had. So that's what animates me. And the reason it's so important for you to find that passion, something bigger than yourself, is because, and now don't let this scare you, I'm telling you so you'll be prepared. It's because we women who engage in the conservative movement, we will be attacked. We will be vocally attacked. We'll be called the most ridiculous names. Those of you who are young moms or want to become moms, you know how silly that is, but that's what they do. And frankly, it hurts. And so the way to sort of buffer ourselves from that hurt, build that thick skin, is to find what that passion is, what is bigger than ourselves that we believe in, because then when the names and invectives start coming, no matter how vicious and, and low life they are, it doesn't matter to us. We can wear it as a badge of honor because we champion something greater, and they're coming after us because they know we're effective and because they know that we are a threat. So come up with that passion. The second thing I would tell you to do 
educate yourself. It's so important and you're doing it right now, coming to the Conservative University of Accuracy in Academia. What a great program this is. And so you've already taken that first step, but take another step, read the great conservative works. You don't have to start off with The Conservative Mind by Russell Kirk, but read things like The Conscience of a Conservative uh, by Barry Goldwater, read The Law by Bastiat, read Liberty and Tyranny by Mark Levin. There are so many great books out there. Ann Coulter, Michelle Malkin, uh, Sean Hannity. You can read all of those or any of those great conservative works. Then read the paper, read magazines, but educate yourself. Now don't wait until you're completely educated to become an activist because you'll wait for the rest of your life. There's no way you can wait until you know everything. Get engaged, but the first step really after determining your passion is to prepare yourself, to know the facts and to know your arguments. So definitely educate yourself. And the final step is just do it. Just get active. You can do this in so many different ways. The first thing I would do is write a letter to the editor. Do something that involves some civic activism. Go to your uh, city council meetings or town council meetings. Get involved in your uh, political party. Do whatever it is to sort of take that first step. But as college students, you have unlimited opportunities really to get involved in the conservative movement. There are groups like Accuracy in Academia, groups like Young America's Foundation and Young Americans for Freedom that are all over the college campuses. They have wonderful training programs. You can go out to Ronald Reagan's beautiful ranch in Santa Barbara, California and learn about this great champion for freedom. They have conferences in Washington as well as in California, regional conferences. You're going to be inspired when you go to to these conferences. You've got um, other organizations like the Leadership Institute, Intercollegiate Studies Institute, Fund for American Studies, and I'm leaving out so many of them and I don't mean to, but there's so many great organizations that you can become involved with. You start off, uh, your college Republicans, whatever it is, you start off by just being a member and then work your way up. We need great conservative women leaders. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh my gosh, I just want to be a member. I want to be in the background. I don't want to be in leadership or be put myself out there. All right, I'm going to challenge you. I know sometimes we women need a little push to be more of a leader. I encourage you, take that leap. Be a leader, be involved, be engaged, and be a leader for good. Because you know what? If you and I don't do it, then that liberal myth, the liberal lies about this ridiculous notion of a war on women, they take hold. They're out there in a vacuum. If conservative women aren't out there aggressively pushing back, we take on the lies, but then we also put forth our positive vision for what freedom is all about, what freedom means for individual women and how important that is. And it's got to be you and me, ladies. We've got to be the ones taking that message out there to our fellow, your fellow college students, but also our fellow American women and citizens, they've got to hear it from us. It's got to be compelling. And you know what? It's got to be courageous. So dig deep and find that courage within you to stand up for something bigger than yourselves, to educate yourselves on the facts and understand the philosophy, the great philosophy behind conservatism and expanded liberty, and then just get involved. Just jump right in there and do it. Find ways to get involved with these different groups and different organizations. If there aren't any of those groups on your campuses, get in touch with the national organizations and start one. They will hold your hand the whole way through and you will immediately be the head of that organization and you will immediately make a profound change on your college campus and you'll start pushing back against the lies and you'll start equipping yourself and others to be a great champion now and for the rest of your lives for freedom. Thank you so much.